Welcome back to the gun dungeon guys got a snake for you here today This is the four inch. I think it's actually four and a quarter inch, but they call it the four inch Colt Anaconda This is the, tw the newer one. They call it the 2021 model Little different from the older Anacondas. These do have a Python type action. It's just beefed up. The old Anacondas had a different uh, different recoil spring, a little different action than the original Pythons. The new Pythons have the same, kind of the same action, pretty well the same action as the ones before. But the Anacondas now have that same action. I did have an old model Anaconda years ago. And I can tell you right up front from experience, this is much, much better. The trigger on this, there's not a lot that can compare to it. I have some, some Smith & Wesson L frames, K frames. I don't have any N frames, but uh, I can tell you right now, the L frames, K frames don't compare to this super smooth action. There's no staging whatsoever in that. So just full disclosure right up front, when I got this gun, I picked it up from the FFL, took it out of the box, I hadn't even left the counter yet, picked it up, was doing some dry firing with it, and the guy behind the counter noticed that the cylinder wasn't turning. I had it out here, so I wasn't really paying much attention to the, the cylinder as I was trying the trigger out. He said, hey, that cylinder isn't turning. Well, lo and behold, Every now and then, it was almost like I was short stroking it, but I wasn't. My finger could be completely off the trigger, and I would pull the trigger, action would work, but the cylinder wouldn't rotate. And what it was, was the mechanism that resets the hand that engages your ratchet and turns your cylinder just wasn't quite fit yet. So I, I got the gun, took it home with full intentions of sending it back to Colt. But I got to messing with it and ended up not having to because all I did was I would pull the trigger and then I would let the spring pressure jet that, that trigger back forward and it would reset the hand. After doing that, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 times, it stopped missing the cylinder altogether. I think it was just a tight fit that wasn't quite worked in yet. But, you know, I tried and tried and tried just pulling the trigger and whatever and it would still do it. But when I started letting that trigger fling forward like that that's what the action that started working it in for me so if you get that issue try that see if it works in i haven't had a single issue since then it was resolved within 10 minutes of messing with it once i got it home so it does have rubber hogue grips on it They'll, those will be changed out i have some ultimate grips coming with the snake skin on them and the Colt, the rampant pony emblem and stuff. It's gonna look good. I'll post some pictures of, of this wearing those once I get them on my Instagram, Facebook. Links to all that stuff's in the description below, by the way. But once I put those on there, I'll post some pictures up. These grips feel good, and in shooting it, I'm probably gonna regret putting wood on here because the rubber is gonna absorb some of the recoil, and it's a stout little ride. 44 Magnum ain't no pussy fart load. But we have some hand loads here. I've got some 300 grainers, some 310 grainers in here somewhere, I think. I've got some 240 grain hand loads here. Everything here is hand loads. I don't buy 44 Magnum. Too expensive when it can reload it for much, much cheaper. Plus, I like reloading those big old straight wall cartridges anyways. <clears throat> but I have been shooting it some. Enjoy it. Don't seem to be too far off right out of the box as far as the sights go. I'm just terrible at shooting double action revolvers, so it is what it is. But uh, fit and finish, excellent fit and finish. I know in one of the Colt videos, they said, oh, well, some people have called us and said their frame is cracked and they send pictures and all it is is where the side plate matches up to the frame and it's so tight fit that it looks like a crack. Well, I don't know what they got. It's a good fit and finish, but it ain't nothing like that. It was a little bit of an exaggeration in my opinion. You can see it right above the cylinder release there. I mean, it's a, it's a good fit, but it ain't no, I'm gonna think it's a crack type fit. Uh, one thing that I don't like about the newer ones, and it's probably on the pythons too, I can't say for sure, is the cylinder release right here. The way that it's machined, to, my thumb doesn't fit in there very well to grab it and it's 
it's kind of sharp on your thumb if you mess with it quite a bit for any length of time it does start to make your thumb a little bit raw i don't i'm not a big fan of the cylinder releases on the colts anyways i think pulling it backwards kind of counterintuitive but i'm sure that's a technique thing a training thing there i think there's some way to where you you dump it and hold it do some different ways to, to make it work more efficiently for you but i like the ruger and smith and wesson styles where it's forward or straight in it's just how i've always loaded revolvers so i mean i'm not going to take this into combat anyway so who really cares but that's just something to point out there the the machining is fairly sharp on that edge minor complaint i know i sound like i'm whining but i just want to point it out to you guys other than that i don't have a bad thing to say about it the top strap is drilled and tapped so you can run optics i'm pretty sure there's something below this rear sight that aids in uh and mounting a red dot as well that was in the colt video i haven't taken this off and looked but that's just what was said in the colt video that i watched but i mean big old heavy stainless steel 44 magnum not a lot to say about it i mean it is what it is it's just a pretty big gun pretty and big and pretty big so as i'm loading this thing up to shoot a little bit for y'all here and for me too i will say that holster wise when i was trying to buy a holster for it i didn't see a whole lot of options that were specific to colt anaconda i don't know if it fits a smith and wesson in frame holster or not it may i don't have one i don't have an in frame smith and wesson so i don't have a holster for one but i will say it it comes just not much the bottom of the trigger guard about this much from fitting into an l frame holster so Maybe it'll fit in the end frame, maybe it won't. If you're looking for Colt specific, at least through Midway, Natchez, the normal outlets that I use, you're not gonna find a whole lot that is specific for four, four inch Colt Anacondas. So there is that to take note of. So go ahead and pay attention to these plates, if I can hit them. You've seen my videos before, you know how much these plates move with nine millimeter, 40, 45, all that. What's the authority the 44 Magnum lays on these bad boys? missed that little one. Oh. That's not good. Let's see what happened there. I think I might have spoke too soon because I'm pretty sure that cylinder didn't rotate and I hit on a already dead primer. Let me try that again. Well, you know what that means? I gotta keep shooting it. Oh, my wrist is gonna love me. So let's load up some of these heavy ones. I think these, these are either, it's been forever since I loaded them, but I know these are gas check bullets. They're either 300 grain or 305, somewhere in there. But they're, they're a heavy for caliber bullet, gas checked, pretty stout. Let's see how it handles those. I loaded these things probably. <laughs> that was back when I was hunting with a super red hawk. So that would have been 2012, 2013-ish. You boy. Oh, what's that tell you? Oh. I still got one. I don't know if my targets are gonna take it. <laughs> Today's video is brought to you by Vetter Holsters. I'd like to thank them for helping the channel out. Here's one of the products they sent over for me. This one fits my 365 XL with the red dot on it. You see it's cut for that. Also has the claw feature on it. Keeps that butt tucked in closer to your body. Another example is this holster for the HK VP9. This is their outside the waistband model. Just look at that cool pattern on that. Excellent retention, great products. So if you wanna go help them out, which they help me out, so it works out both ways, I'll put a link to their website below. Go check out Vetter Holsters. 
So I've got four of these uh, 240 grain XTPs. That's all I got of these out here. I'm gonna run them by themselves. See how they do. Boys, that's got some oomph to them right there. <laughs> now, if you, if you think 44 Magnum is a joke, it ain't. It's got some oomph. I enjoy the big boomers. Sometimes, though, you just need some light loads in these suckers. And guess what? I ain't got any out here. So we're just gonna keep right on going, torture myself. You know what? Let's try it. Let's try the gong up there. Might need to readjust you. I don't know if you can see it or not. You can see it now for sure. Here we go. See if I can keep from flinching enough to get a good point of impact. This time. I'm shooting just over it, I think. Trigger. Didn't. Oh. You saw it. You saw it. Got one more left. Not looking promising for the old pony. Still hits that plate with authority up there, though. All right. Do you feel lucky, punk? Finger's taking a beating. And yes, I said finger. All right. You know, honestly, the few little issues that I've had, what you've seen here, I'm not trying to make an excuse for Colt or, or anything like that. I honestly think these guns are just fit with such tight tolerances that you gotta shoot them a little bit, mess with them a little bit, get them broke in. I know it's an old train of thought is breaking in guns, but you know, something like this has a lot of moving parts that work interconnectingly. And something, if it's fit really tight with a smooth action like this one is, I think it's gonna take a little bit of working. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not terribly worried about it. I'm pretty confident that it's gonna work itself out, just shooting it, dry firing it, messing with it. We'll see. Oh yeah, these are those heavy hard casts again. That one was not. <laughs> That was definitely not. I lied. I did have a light powder puff load out here. And I forgot that I had them. It's those semi wad cutter ones. Forgot I had a few of those mixed in there with these heavy hard gas. I think the rest of them are hard gas. Heavy. That definitely was. That definitely was. That was. Oh, I got the spinner. Oh, yeah. And a click. Probably a flinch on that if you watch real close too. I about garned hit. She's drawing blood, boys. <laughs> I'm telling you what. Just the way that my hand is made, it sets just like that, and the edge of that frame is absolutely wearing me out. I'm gonna keep shooting though. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna put a few more in here and see if these slight little issues have you know what? I'm gonna grab a few of those little light ones. I think that's all I got. Three. Oh, I'm just gonna give myself a little break. Ah. Oh my gosh, that's so much better. <laughs> that's night and day. Whoa, so much better. I need to load more of those. All right, back to some of these pretty little lipstick. I think these are acne bullets, I think. Powder coated, 240 grain, lead, but they are loaded with, I wanna say they're loaded with H110, but I ain't gonna swear to it. All right, you're just gonna have to hear them this time, maybe, if I hit them. 
You can see that recoil. It ain't no joke. Ah, missed the last shot. Wasn't the last shot. You shooting J frames. That was the last shot. That's me tapping out. I'm tapping. <laughs> I'm done. So you saw the pile of brass there that I've shot through it so far. A couple little issues as we had along the way there. I don't think they are going to be a big deal. Like I said earlier, moving on down the road with it, shooting some, messing with it. I like getting guns out and honestly, I watch TV and shoot people on TV. I don't know if that's bad ethics or not, but I do that a lot. Uh, I think getting it out, messing with it, doing some of that, shooting it some more. I don't think we're going to have any issues moving down the road, guys. It's one of those things. It's just a fitment, super tight fitment, not a bad fitment, just a tight fitment issue. I think I'm going to leave that blood on there. I think, I think that'll corrode stainless. It's supposed to not. If it's high quality stainless, it shouldn't. We'll see. I think I'm going to leave it on there. At least, at least long enough for it to wear itself off. Just kind of a little trophy. It got me. Snake bit me. Well, that's what I got for you today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and check out the links down below, Patreon, Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz. I have all that going. And until next time, as always, stay tuned.